now it's on. Anyways, it's a good thing everybody's here and paying attention. Um, yeah, so they decided they were going to add in attributes to help people understand. So, there's not going to be asked if you need to have the attributes or not. It's nothing like that. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so now, the only thing in here, so I identified the, pri the uh, primary keys. The only thing that you don't see on here is foreign keys because normally in a conceptual diagram, you don't include the foreign keys. Foreign keys are not part of the ride. So you um, you don't include, the only time where it makes sense to include them is if they participate in the primary key like this. So in here, I would actually add the employee number and the uh, project number where did my green marker go okay so conceptual diagram i am now taking up i'm erasing this board and i'm moving to this board to finish so i'm going to go from conceptual to logical and then logical to physical. I'm going to do the logical and the physical on the same board because they're almost the same. Okay. And I need this. Okay. So I am going to start with the employee table and I'm going to make it nice and wide so I have room to work. As this is where you're going to notice I'm going to start following naming conventions. Up till now, naming conventions had no meaning, but now they start having meaning. Employees. And the thing is, I'm still going to stick to the field names that I have. They're just going to be Snake case. So we have an employee, we know we have employee number, name, and email. Great. We know that our employee number is our primary key. Logical diagram of employees. And we have our rate ID and the hourly rate. And we know our rate ID is our primary key. Fantastic. Now, You will notice that I have not put in the foreign keys yet because I'll put those in soon. And our last one over here is billing. Can somebody take a guess why I'm not putting the foreign keys in yet? Just out of curiosity, somebody can think, figure out my thought process. You're, 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 you're almost there. The law, the reason why I didn't put in the foreign keys yet is because I haven't put in the relationships yet. So if you don't draw in the relationships, you don't put in the foreign keys yet. So now I'm going to start with this one. So rates to projects, as you'll notice, it's optional on both ends. So it's, and the rate ID does not participate 
in the primary key. So it's a non-identifying relationship. And we know it's a like that. So now we're going to add in the rate ID down here. ID, and we know that this is a foreign key. Um, in the original data, we know that the employee participated in the primary key, so this is actually going to be an ID. It's in my hand. This is going to be an identifying relationship. So that's why the line is solid instead of dashed. So you know when you played in My MySQL Workbench, you've already noticed if you did non-identifying, the line was dashed. If it was identifying, the line was solid. If you haven't, you should try it and see. You'll see there's a difference in the lines. Identifying means that the foreign key participates in the primary key. So now I'm going to add employee number. And employee number is part of the primary key, but it's also it's a foreign key, which this also means this is a weak entity because it can't exist without the rest. And our last relationship is the project. Like such, and we have project number, which again is part of the primary key, and it's also a foreign key. Logical diagram. Can you ask us to do that? Because it's because I just realized the difference between physical and conceptual. I thought that they are the same, but the drawing tool is different. So I did that. Yeah, yeah, well, the, the lab the, when you're talking about the normalization lab, I actually asked for a conceptual diagram. But I mean, if you gave me a physical or logical, I'd still accept it as long as you demonstrated that you understood what you were doing. That's what I'm after. Okay, so this is a logical diagram, not a physical diagram. Can somebody tell me why? What the difference is? No, the foreign keys are there. Data types. There's no data types. So a logical diagram, the only difference, the only real difference between a logical and a physical diagram is the logical diagram can apply to any database server. The physical, di the physical diagram is specific to the server you're going to install, you put it on. So a physical diagram for MySQL would be different than a physical diagram for Postgres, probably. And probably different, again, for the other ones. Okay, so now we're going to put in our data types. So we're going to start with um, in the original data, the employee number was just a number. So we're probably safe to assume it's an int. Okay. So usually when you fill it out in here, you also fill it out down there. And if you're using a tool like MySQL Workbench, it just creates the keys for you and it sets the data types automatically. Rate ID. Again, that was an integer. So that'll also be an int. The invoice number was also just a straight up number. You may or may not remember that the project number on the other hand, was written like that. It's a string. And all the numbers were two digits dash three digits. So six characters. Just to be safe, we should probably give ourselves an extra, right? And really, you could just use a var car, but I'm guessing you're going to use a car just so that there's a bit of variety on the diagram. There's no benefit in either direction. So that'll be a car seven. Rate. All right, hourly rate. Now, in the original data, it just showed a number with no decimal places. But realistically, hourly rates could have decimal places, you know, $95, 50 cents an hour kind of thing. So we're probably going to want to use a numeric or a decimal. They're the same thing. 
and we will want to make it a five comma two. Five comma two means we are going to store nine digits with two reserved for the decimal places. So five, two. So that's why that one's there. So we can probably safely assume for hours, some companies bill solid full hours, some companies bill half hours, some bill, people bill by the quarter hour, lawyers bill by the minute. So we can probably, again, use a numeric. But this one here, you'd probably want, um, five two is probably enough because you're probably not going to charge more than 999 hours on one invoice because that's, that you can't do that in a month, right? So, so you could probably do a five two. If you want to be really safe, you do a six two. Just so, just in case you have a weird month where you know lots of people worked on it. Oh yeah, our project number was also a car seven, so we got to remember to add that down here. And the last ones, okay, project description. This is where a business decision needs to come in. Is this like an entire paragraph describing the, the project or is it just like the name of the project? On the original data, you notice it was like simple things like UX design or, you know, so we can probably go with just a straight up Varkar 50. 50 was more than enough to handle any of the descriptions that were there. It's all good. So now we are left with this. Name. In our data, the name was one single field. Some business needs, you'll want to split the name into two fields or three fields. In some parts of the world, some people only have one name. No, some parts of India, people have one name. Some parts of uh, Polynesia, people have one name. They don't have family names. They just have a name. Uh, I really don't know how that works, but, you know, they have one name. So, we want to make sure that we have lots of room for a really long name. Um, I once had a student from Puerto Rico, Hispanic name, not just a normal Hispanic name, it was a good Catholic Hispanic name. He had five first names, three middle names, plus his last name. And the best part of him, he'd actually answer to any of them. It became a game with me and him the whole semester if I could make him not realize I was talking to him. And he, every time. So, Varkar 100 for names. It's safe. Just give yourself lots of room. And now we have email. Uh, did I ever tell you guys the story about the really long email address? I don't think so. So... When I first moved to Ottawa in 1997, which is probably before some of you were born. So 1997, I was working for a company called Digital Equipment Corporation. Most of you have probably never heard of Digital Equipment. They were one of the major high-tech employers in the Ottawa area. They had offices in Canada, uh, Bell's Corners, um, back when it was called Hull, before it was changed to Gatineau. They had close to seven or 8,000 employees in the Ottawa area. Compaq bought them. Some of you may recognize the name Compaq. Compaq was then bought by HP. There's a name everybody in this room probably recognizes. So when I was working there, I was writing software for one of their call centers. I was writing call tracking software. And I inherited a code base because, you know, they already had stuff, so they just gave it to me. And the guy who wrote it before me decided 46 characters was enough for an email address. I'm like, you know, that's not too bad. You know, if I look at mine, you know, I look at my name and whatever it is at gmail.com, even with my long name, I, 45 would handle that just fine. Until one day, it Dan's there plunking away in his uh, cubicle, right? And good little corporate slave. Poop, 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 poop. And my phone rings. My phone never rings. I'm like, oh, this is fun. Pick up the phone. Uh, Dan, I can't put in an email address in. I'm going, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you? Sure. Click, get up, walk like 700 meters to the other end of the building. Look at him. He goes, this is the person's email address. She was from Quebec. 
most of you in here probably doesn't know what that means. She had a hyphenated first name. Cool. But it's not like her name was like J-O dash Anne. Her name was like, like Joanne dash Antoinette or something. So she had this really long first name. First problem. Period. If anybody knows about how married names happen in Quebec, when women get married, they get a hyphenated last name. Boudreau, not Goudreau, Boudreau, dash, I don't remember what the other one was, but it was long. So, you know, you look at my last name, right? G-A-U-D-R-E-A-U-L-T. 10 letters in my last name, 10, 11 letters in my last name. She had a combination of 24 letters for her last name, plus a hyphen. Okay? We, we can now see that we're now quickly running out of room in the 46. But it gets worse. At, okay, cool, we all know about at. That's not a mystery. Back then, email addresses aren't like they are now. Like, you know, if you email somebody to the government of Ontario, it's just a person's name at ontario.on.gov or whatever it is, right? Or actually, I think now it's just ontario.ca even. Back then, because each department ran their own mail server, they had to route the mail by the department. So this lady worked for the MNR, the Ministry of Natural Resources. So she had the big long name at, get a load of this, Ministry of Natural Resources. Ministère des Ressources Naturelles. When dot gov. It was like, like it took the guy like a minute and a half to type in the email address. That is the day I decided that all email addresses are Varkar 150. <laughs> and I really wish I was making up the story. But I didn't because I had to emergency patch the software. So the guy wrote the lady's email address in the notes of the call so they at least know how to contact her to, by email. And then I emergently patched the database at 3 a.m. Instead of being at home in my bed, I went home, had supper, went back to my office because, you know, 1990s, we didn't exactly have uh, easy ways to work remotely like we do now. And I patched that software at, um, yeah, 3 a.m., pushing the patch out to 100, 100 technicians. It was a good time. Email address, 150 minimum. Make it 200 if you want to be safe. But never 46. I don't know where 46 came from. I have no idea. It was such a weird number that the guy picked. Man, if I could see Andre today, I'd kick him in the knees. It still makes me angry. 20, 25 years later. <laughs> so, logical to physical. There it is. So that was the entire process that you guys learned from week one to week four. Realistically, another thing you do at this point is you identify things that are null or not null, which is something I forgot to do with my other group. And here we decide what's important, right? The hourly rate probably should be not null because what's the point of putting it in if you don't have an hourly rate? So this would probably be not null. The project description could be null. So we'll leave it like that. The Rate ID, since it's optional, is definitely null. So this one is nullable. This one's nullable. The primary key is always not null. Right? So not null. Not null. The first, the person's name is probably not null, but maybe they don't have an email address yet because they haven't been assigned an email address. So email address could be nullable. And um, over here, everything is going to be not null. Because why would you have a billing entry if you don't have any hours? So this is all. Not null. Just like that. And that's, you know, you've heard Dan's logic behind making his choices, which is a useful thing to hear sometimes. And now I'm going to take a picture of this. And that's it. <laughs> we are uh, pretty much done. There we go. So you are in this room for your uh, as usual, there'll be no devices on the desk. Your phones go away. 
smartwatches. I see that big fat piece of tech on your wrist. I'll be confiscating the piece of tech. I don't have one, so maybe I need one. I'm, I'm kidding. I wouldn't take it, but put it away. Um, if I don't think anybody in here writes in Cal, so don't worry about it. If you do write in Cal, your test will be dropped off in time. I just don't remember. All right, that's it, guys.